the intention is to cover the following during this session. Um, firstly, we're going to touch on the different types of charities. Secondly, the Charities Act requirements for property transactions, which will be the bulk of this session. Then we'll move on to the Charities Act requirements in connection with mortgages, the consequences of non-compliance and execution of deeds on behalf of charities. We're then going to touch on the definition of connected parties and the changes coming in with the Charities Act 2022. Um, the next thing to consider is the difference between non-exempt and exempt charities. Charities are generally govern governed by the Charities Act 2011, as it's been amended and is being amended by the Charities Act 2022. Charities are either registered, which is a non-exempt charity, exempt or accepted. The requirements in the Charities Act in connection with land apply to non-exempt and accepted charities, but generally don't apply to exempt charities. This is usually because most exempt charities are monitored by another government body, such as the RSH for housing associations or the OFS for universities. Um, the key points to check when you're acting for a charity um, when disposing of land. Um, just to summarise what we've been through, we need to check whether the charity is exempt or non-exempt, check the charity's governing document and whether the charity has the power to undertake the proposed activity and how the property is held. So is it permanent endowment or subject to other restrictions on disposition? We need to check which sections of the Charities Act will apply and ensure that the charity complies with these. We need to ensure the disposition documents contain the relevant statements and comply with the provisions of the Charities Act. And we need to check how the deeds will be executed. We also need to consider whether any SDLT may be payable if there is any sort of reverse premium.